Good. All right. Good evening. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. This is a special town council meeting, and today is Thursday, November 29th. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Okay, again, uh, good evening and welcome to everybody. We're here today because we had a very full agenda uh, just a few days ago on Monday, which was the 26th of November, and today's Thursday, the 29th. So we're going to pick off more or less, uh, pick up more or less where we left off. Um, the first uh, order of business uh, is with our town solicitor. Um, we have a letter on file. Um, which uh, is um, a pending resignation. Peter, did you want to add anything to that? or? Okay. Uh, no, no, I, just uh, that uh, I, I know if Tony was here and, and for myself, uh, it's been a, a real pleasure serving the town, and um, I hope that uh, 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 when you go in a new direction that um, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Well, I know we all very much appreciate your service. Um, do we want to... Accept that, or uh, um, yeah. I'll make a motion to accept this resignation with regret. I do want to say something that Tony and his associates have been a great help to all of us in the last four years. I am sorry that this is the avenue they chose to go. Uh, I respect their decision. Um, I, I want to thank them for all their service and for putting up with us for all these years. Um, and that's my motion. Second. Um, I'd, okay. I'd like to amend the motion just to make sure that um, it's accepted pending the hiring of a new right. oh. and we'll stay. Well, I was going to discuss that after I got a second. Sure. Um, but uh, yes, we'll, we'll stay on, cover the town's legal needs uh, until um, a successor is appointed. But could we just for the sake of crisp language, could we, could we amend the motion just to say effective upon the engagement of a replacement? Something to that effect, just so it's... I accept that, that amendment. I can't really hear you. You're going to have to speak up, Justin. You're going to yell, Justin, yell. <coughs> okay, so just so we're clear, is that amendment or is that a restatement of the main motion? That's a restatement. Okay. I accept this resignation. Is that a restatement like of the second as well? Uh, was that Trisha? Second, that second. Okay, great. All right, we have Sorry, a live. That was a restatement. Yep, we have a live motion on the floor. It is a little boomy, isn't it? Yeah. Is that is that okay? We have a live motion on the floor to uh, accept the resignation of the town solicitor's firm, uh, pending uh, engagement of a, of a replacement solicitor. Is there any uh, any discussion? Uh, hearing no discussion, I'd like to proceed to a vote, and uh, certainly would like the record to reflect our appreciation for your service to the town. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, just before we leave this item, I, um, I don't know that it needs a vote, but I was going to suggest uh, that Nancy, uh, who is one of the attorneys on this board, uh, at least if she's willing to do it, come back with a recommendation on how to proceed um, by the next, not the workshop, but the December 10th meeting. But obviously, if anybody else has any ideas, um, feel free to bring them forward. But I do hope to proceed pretty quickly to, uh, to filling a replacement. Nancy, we've done this before, so we do have the ad and the job description and just, the entire. OK. okay. All right, thank you. So can was can the, we not just, I'm sorry, are we not going to just use the prior job description and add so we yes. can get this going I mean we could uh, authorize Nancy to what I, everything that I gave to Councillor Driggs is uh, it's from 2015 and and I showed her the complete RFPs how they went we had three different RFPs the ads the, the letters to them and explained where we have advertised so but obviously I think this she's going to get it all together and get back to me, she said. So, but I don't think it should go out without our approval. And obviously, I, this I has been decided before. So um, I don't know if we need a, a person to do this. We just need for the next meeting the RFPs to come to us, and for us to decide um, if that's the way we want to do it. I don't think it needs to be a committee of one. 
So you want me to put this on the next agenda of the hour? Oh yeah, I'm not oh. suggesting it's committee one. I, I, I definitely am not comfortable just posting in the blind. I have I asked Nancy for a copy of today, so I haven't even seen the last RFP. Um, I mean, I can think back to when I was on the council many years ago. We had a process, but it might have changed. So, um, so why don't we? Is the suggestion to go immediately to posting without a vote? The suggestion or? is to put it on the next agenda. Oh, that's exactly my suggestion. That's right. So, but what did, what did that process look like last time? Was it weeks and weeks? So. Um, it took a while. We uh, it took about four weeks. We got the applications, and then we set up the interviews. We did a, an initial interview. We brought it down to maybe three, and then did a final interview with those three, and then we made a decision. How, how long did you say, Denise? It took. It took. Um, Nancy saying four weeks, but I, I believe it took about six weeks with, it, with all of it. It took because about four weeks to get the ads up, because we put it in uh, Lawyers Monthly, is it, or Lawyers yeah, Monthly? Yeah, it's a week. So you have to reach the dates, you know, to make it coincide with your advertisement and things like and that. And I believe we put and in I the Providence put it Journal. In, yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. We did. So I've tried to pull it together, and uh, I'll give... But quite frankly, there's a meeting before the whole thing where we look at all the applicants and we decide, right. you know, who we want to right. interview. Right. And then I think last time we interviewed about, were you here? No. We interviewed about six and then we cut it down to, to maybe two. Okay. And then we had a final interview. But if we interview six and number one candidate is really coming out to us as that's the person we want, there might not be a reason for a second interview. And it's my understanding that this is for the current, just the role that Attorney DeSisto currently, right. like he's not the labor attorney. Right. No, it'd be oh, just zoning and legal. Okay, all right. Just the land use and the uh, land general use. solicitor. Land solicitor, okay. And, uh, general litigation. Okay. He's also not the prosecutor, that's another attorney. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, all set. Well, one thing I'm kind of wondering is, because <clears throat> as with some of the other things we're going to be addressing, there might be some, some justification in taking a look at the solicitor's role and what we want that to be like. Um, and that's something we would want to take a little more time to review. And so I'm wondering if this is a six to eight week process and you add in the holidays, I mean, does it, do we necessarily have to do this full process and and come up with a, a essentially permanent solicitor? Or is there some mechanism for an interim solicitor while we think about the, the... Well, I think Tony has agreed to stay on until we made a decision. Am I correct, Peter? Uh, that's correct. Um, and you know, obviously the RFP process is to satisfy the council that you're getting um, you know, the candidates you want to look at. Uh, it's not required to go out to RFP for, for this type of uh, contract, mm -hmm. um, so. And the solicitor's, the solicitor's role is defined in the charter as well. I mean, there is a, the, the, the role is defined by charter and the responsibilities are defined by charter. In, in broad, broad language. Um, but that, again, that's all stuff that would, you know, could be discussed over time. So, so if, so the, so to be clear, next time we're going to look at what the RFPs have been and decide whether that's what we want to go out with and then approve that to go out at the next meeting and then give some kind of deadline for responses and mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I, I think that's a process and if anybody else, um, Nancy or others have other thoughts, then and yeah, then I'd say December 10th is, uh, it would be the time to bring, bring that forward. So, you know, I, I, for one, I'm just, just one of seven, but I, I'm not persuaded that just because that's how it's always been done is always how it, you know, how it needs to be done. So got to make sure we comply with the charter and, um, you know, see what it looks like. Okay. okay. Yep. All right, moving on to number two, um, Mr. Town Administrator, approval of proposed agreement with the Tiverton Wastewater District regarding a lease and use of interceptor. Take away, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you have in your packets, or you had in your packets, uh, some documentation including a draft agreement that was prepared by uh, the Tiverton Wastewater District and reviewed by the town solicitor. Uh, the background of this is that the Mount Hope, in Mount Hope Bay interceptor um, was constructed some time ago. The town took ownership in 2003. 
Um, in 2015, assets were transferred from the town to the Tiverton Wastewater District, but this particular piece of infrastructure was specifically excluded. The reason for that being, I believe, is that it was financed in a certain way with bond financing, and there were some conditions uh, attached to that financing that made it uh, inappropriate to have this transferred. Since then, um, the interceptor has been used, in, including by the Tiverton Wastewater District, without any sort of agreement outlining what the respective responsibilities are. So. The district would very much like to have that agreement and uh, specify specifically that it has the right to convey wastewater into that interceptor, but also to clarify that the town remains responsible for maintenance. So that's why you have in front of you the lease and use agreement. The floor is open. Any discussion or comments? And by the way, um, until I'm told otherwise, uh, comments are welcome from the public as well, subject to timing. Okay, hearing none, is there any objection to, well, actually the floor is open. Well, there'll be a motion on this matter. Is this something we could put on the consent agenda, or did you feel that it was a... Uh, well, generally, if you enter into an agreement, I, I don't think you do that through a consent agenda typically, but yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed agreement with Tiverton Wastewater <coughs> regarding le lease and use of interceptor. Second. Can we have a second. Thank you. We have a live motion to approve as presented. Any further discussion? I do have a question for the solicitor. Peter, if for some reason the Tiverton Wastewater District ceases to exist, then does there does a successor entity? So there would have to be if the, if the Tiverton Wastewater District was to cease to exist, there'd have to be some sort of successor entity. Entity um, either would be <coughs> dissolved by statute, and would, that would designate the successor entity. You know, possibly they could do um, a bankruptcy, but you know, then that would have the, the estate there. So, but. Any contractual obligations of the district, if there is a successor entity, would be transferred to that successor entity. Okay. This is a pretty, um, it's, it's a pretty, um, it's not a very extensive contract. It just gets to the um, essential terms. Okay. All right. That answers my question. Oh, Jan wanted to say something. I just want to add one thing. The district was clear that it remains willing to become an owner of the interceptor at such time as these issues with the financing have been resolved. So, just to, for clarity, what's the, the current state of affairs? Is the There's an interceptor. It's being used by the, the Tiverton Wastewater District without a specific agreement dealing with the respective responsibilities, including the responsibilities for maintenance, things like that. Okay. And in the abstract theory of if this weren't to pass, which, what are the... Nothing changes. And so the downside is just... This clarifies that there's an agreement and basically are there any risks we're trying to mitigate here or anything like that? So I, I would say, um, you know, whether you have a written agreement or just a, uh, an implied agreement through the practice of the, of the parties, um, you know, you'd have some type of agreement. The risk that you generally run when you don't put the terms in writing is that one party can say, I understood the terms to be something that's not included. One provision that's in this written agreement, it says, this is the entire agreement. These are all the terms, there's not anything else. So one party can't say to the other party, well, I thought you were gonna do X, Y, and Z, because this is it. Okay. So this is a transcription of the verbal agreement, essentially? Essentially, yes. I mean, just so we're clear, though, I mean, the town is bearing most of the risk here. I mean, we've got the maintenance, we've got the liability, but that's, the expectation of ownership, yeah. yeah. Yes. So. You don't want to charge them $1.05? What, what what I, when I see a date that says December 31st, 2017, <laughs> that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it gives us time to evaluate that's whether the, it's working. <laughs> what's, the, what's the date? 99 years out is, is 21.17. Oh, 21.17. That, that, uh, that makes you think about things. Um, <laughs>
Um, <laughs> Any objection to proceeding to a vote? Okay, hearing none, we have a live motion and a second to approve as presented. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? 7-0. Thank you for your work on this. Uh, item three, approval of National Grid Verizon petitions for joint poll locations. DPW recommendation, sir. Good evening. Good evening. As per the inserts in the packet, there is no objection by DPW to the utility pole relocation near 193 High Hill Road as shown on the attached plan 25399-335 dated 5-23-18 uh, submitted by National Grid with the stipulation that the utility poles are placed a minimum of four feet from the pavement edge matching the existing adjacent poles. Stipulation again was what four feet? Yes, a minimum of four That's feet familiar. off the pavement edge. Yep. Matching the existing adjacent poles. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the National Grid Verizon petition for a joint pole location at 193 High Hill Road. Second. Thank you. We have a live motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Any objection to proceeding to a vote? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Seven up. Item four, town administrator, back to you. Approval and authorization to extend the contract with PAR Engineering for the landfill closure consulting services until February 8, uh, 28, 2019. Thank you. You have the copy of the agenda request in your packet as well that has the background on it. Power Engineering has been our consulting engineer uh, for purposes of uh, getting us to and through the closure uh, of the landfill, including the development of the closure plan. Uh, the contract expired um, after one extension already in September and the question is whether we can um, extend it. Uh, the reason for that being, um, there's several reasons actually. One is that part of their responsibilities is to do environmental monitoring at the site, which is a requirement uh, from DEM, which needs to continue on a monthly basis. So it would be good if we could continue that instead of drawing the ire of our regulators. Um, but it's also important for us as we continue to plan for uh, the closure. And um, they will continue to work on the closure plan as it is still being reviewed by DEM. We've been in discussions with DEM. We've had meetings with them. We're actually looking at how uh, the closure plan can be approved, approved by them in such a way that it also allows us to address some of the stormwater and water quality issues that have been raised uh, about this. So there is uh, actually some benefit to taking a little more time uh, to come to that consensus, hopefully with DEM, because it may be a better ultimate solution for the landfill closure that actually could save us some money uh, as well. Um, after this part of the contract, the idea is that Power Engineering prepares construction documents and prepares documents so that the town can then go out to bid for the construction, which will be a separate uh, contract. So I recommend that we, um, that you approve this uh, extension through February 28. Floor is open for discussion or motions. <coughs> Mr. President, I'll make a motion to extend the contract for PAR Engineering for the Landfill Closure Consulting Services through February 28, 2019. Second. Thank you. We have a live motion and a second. Any discussion? Well, just to understand, what, what would are there other options, or is it? I mean, if we didn't do this, we would just what? Do if nothing. you do, didn't do it, you wouldn't have a consulting engineer working on you know the continuing effort to close the landfill in accordance with the state requirements, which 
is a bit of a work in progress as we continue to discuss what the best way uh, is to close that landfill and at the same time address uh, these issues that have come up about water quality. The danger is that those would become two separate cases, which makes no sense whatsoever, since the way the closure plan is developed should actually address some of those water quality issues. So it makes sense to take that additional time, but it's also very important that the environmental monitoring continue in the interim. And the, the cost of this extension <coughs> is what? Uh, I don't have a breakdown because, uh, I mean, I can certainly supply uh, invoices that we've had for things like the monthly monitoring, um, but, you know, it also depends what else comes up. For example, the meetings with DEM are not necessarily always anticipated. We don't know whether we're going to have a meeting this month or next month or whatever, or how many more meetings we will have. This contract is actually, they're working without a contract now, or they've stopped no. work on September 30th? Yes, they, they did not stop. They were good enough to continue. Yeah, they are working without a contract. Without a contract, okay. At the same rate, I imagine? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're just cleaning it up, and this is only taking us to February, so this isn't like a long term. We're not finding the town. It's just a few months, so we can we can probably give it a broader look if, if, if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any objection to proceeding to a vote? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Great. That's 7 0. Thank you. Number five, Director Rogers, permission for auction of surplus vehicles. We probably should have had you introduce yourself last time. Very good, thank you. Uh, Rick Rogers, Director of DPW. And yes, uh, we're requesting that the Department of Public Works, Police Department, Fire Department, Senior Center, Code Enforcement, Building Official, and Tax Assessor be allowed to auction off surplus vehicles that are presently stored at the DPW <coughs> yard. And they're listed on the attached sheet in the inserts with the agenda. And um, just remind me, our authority to do this is... Uh so uh, essentially this uh, comes from Article 4 of the Charter, which assigns to the Town Council, uh, unlike other towns, you know, Newport, for example, that has a surplus property ordinance that requires a specific procedure to be followed. Uh, Tiverton doesn't, but uh, all duties and obligations imposed on the town or that, would, uh, that don't, are otherwise uh, assigned by the Charter fall to the Town Council. The, on the catch -all. Yes. So the, the procedures are whatever we reasonable yes you're satisfied with the procedures thank you floor is open for discussion or motions I'll make a motion we grant permission to go out to have the auction second yeah, but I, and actually just for the the public um, if, if folks were interested in this in uh, bidding, the, the process is going to be uh, on the website, or let me just speak a little bit to uh, how one actually would engage in this process. I, I would find out from the solicitor and the town clerk whether it has to be posted on the website. That would be a good idea, in my opinion, along with advertisements in the newspaper and along with a minimum bid requirement as shown on one of your inserts that matches what's currently considered the either the junkyard price or the parts price for the vehicles the papers website yeah um, I think it's usual <laughs> yeah and and the advertising can follow the ordinary uh, bidding process that you would engage in any type of contract mm -hmm. there, so. who's gonna run the auction <laughs> cool. Do you talk faster <laughs> All right, is there any uh, objection to proceeding to a vote? No comments from anybody? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, looks like seven of three. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I see what you want to do is go every other item you like to have here, uh, John. So back to you for number it's all six. It's all <laughs> um, on the recommendation uh, as to authorizing a and negotiating a contract with renewable energy.
Thank you. Again, the uh, request uh, for the item on the agenda is in your packet. It gives the beginning of the background. Um, essentially, when the council decided to go in this direction, it was in recognition of an opportunity that exists to take advantage of um, a renewable energy program in the state that um, provides credits for the production of renewable energy and the use of renewable energy. And those credits um, can be allocated to um, off-takers, they're called, in this case, the municipality would take some of the energy uh, that is being produced. And with that allocation, the credits can come, the credits then become um, valuable in terms of their monetary value and the way the program is working is that, uh, for example, if we take a certain amount of the energy and we get the credits, we keep a certain percentage of those credits but pay the rest of the credits back to the producer. And that's how they ultimately make uh, their money. So it's an incentive program, essentially, a somewhat complicated way uh, to provide incentives, but it provides incentives to people to get into the business of developing renewable energy, and it provides an incentives for, for, in this case, the municipality uh, to use some of that renewable energy, uh, realize the savings on that, but also at the same time, uh, increase the uh, proportion of renewable energy that we use in the state, which is consistent with the state policy. Um, so the council uh, agreed that we should go forward. We issued an RFP. Uh, we received five proposals from uh, four uh, respondents, which uh, we have been comparing. And um, all proposals are responsive in the, the legal sense that they uh, responded to the various things that the RFP asked for. Um, I compared them using several criteria, which I've listed in, uh, in this background, uh, including the track record, uh, how much of a stake uh, the proponent has in the project itself, because sometimes um, developers will very quickly develop this and then sell it off and, and be gone, whereas other developers are more local, for example, and uh, are planning to have long-term ownership, and I thought that was actually a fairly important factor uh, to consider. Um, we obviously looked at who was offering the greatest savings and we asked people to specify that over three terms, 20 years, 25 years, and 30 years. I will say that over the course of looking into this more deeply and comparing, I became convinced that we should not um, commit ourselves to the, lo the longer of those terms, that it's still a young program, so to speak, and a young development. And uh, I think the 20-year term is the better way to go because if things develop, uh, in a way that become, you know, maybe better options become available, there will be a chance to do that. But within that 20 years, there is a significant opportunity to save money, depending on uh, what you think is worth it. Um, when I looked at the proposals, the one that on the 20 year term offers the greatest savings, it amounts to about $780,000 over uh, those 20 years. <coughs> So um, I am, frankly, still a little reluctant to recommend only one particular option. One option is obviously to uh, negotiate with uh, either the lowest bid or the most advantageous uh, proposal or the two best ones, which I would recommend. Um, another one is, I, I, will, I want to share this, I contacted the Office of Energy Resources, which has been very involved uh, not only in developing this program, but in promoting renewable energy and then reviewing a lot of proposals as solar development happens in the state. And it suggested that we might want to do another little mini RFP to engage a consultant to review the proposals for us make the recommendation, and then ultimately negotiate the contract uh, with uh, the successful entity. The cost of that is estimated to be in the range of $7,000 to $10,000. I am not entirely sure that's necessary. This is a pretty straightforward um, thing to do. On the other hand, we are not the experts, and I want to be clear about that, that um, 
we, we put the RFP together so that you could com compare the various proposals reasonably well. Uh, we understand the principles. Um, so I think we can do this, but if the council feels that it would be good to get some experts involved, which is, for example, how Bristol has done this, uh, we could do that. It would set us back a little bit uh, in time. One thing I want to point out that uh, part of the reason there are uh, quite a few companies interested in this at this particular time, this incentive program does expire uh, sometime next year, I believe. But this is what we were talking about the other night, right? In 2010, the credits... 2019. I'm sorry, 19. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that there would be, well, unless they renew the program, which is frequently this done. This is the federal investment tax right. credit program. Um, so there is a, a reason for um, projects to want to get into the ground and actually operating as soon as possible. And the this was another thing I looked at is at what time uh, the projects would actually be ready to operate and the ones that I thought were the most uh, beneficial to a town would be ready around the uh, summer of 2019. Uh, so that also means that you start realizing savings uh, a little bit more, more quickly. So um, I guess the question is whether the council would prefer to get experts involved to more carefully and elaborately review the proposal or is comfortable with the review that we've had so far. Um, I can certainly share additional information with you. I was frankly not sure how much I could disclose about the respondents, but I think actually there, and I do have a version that um, identifies them that I can pass out as well. But some of these submittals um, have somewhat confidential proprietary uh, information in them, but yeah, you can speak to that. Sure. Uh, just, I guess, two points is one is that, you know, many of the applicants want to keep their um, uh, uh, submissions um, confidential. The, uh, the one um, aspect that I'm not sure they're fully accounting for is that when you're dealing with a government entity uh, in Rhode Island. Peter, if Jan passes out anything with names, doesn't that become an open document? It's an open document once it's submitted to the town, unless it's otherwise exempt from the APRA. Okay, because um, so I thought you said that some people didn't want to be disclosed. Right, but they've already submitted a okay. packet to the town. I'm, so I'm I just think at this asking point, before that gets passed out. No, I think at this point it would be better just to look at what they have. and, oh, and sorry, it's all the same. Uh, uh, with the understanding, you know, at, at some point they may have a concern about that, but it's kind of just part of the course when you're dealing with a municipality or another government entity. I don't um, think they're concerned about being identified so much, uh, but they, some of them are concerned about a particular financial information and things like that. How, do, how, do, we do how much this, does do it. this tie yeah, into no. what we were talking about at, at our preceding meeting and we're now looking to the planning board to come back with um, some recommendations given the amount of um, uh, dissent and people had to these big arrays coming in and, and the use of the land if depending what the planning board does is that going to affect how much we want credits and we want to encourage people to come in I not necessarily and I'm glad you asked the question because what I should have done early on in the presentation was making clear what kind of project this is this is not on town owned property actually none of these projects would be in the town of Tiverton the way this program works, it creates incentives for people to develop solar on sites that are available and then find customers, so to speak, that will so pay for the that electricity. Of the and the benefit to us, I believe, is that um, we don't have the responsibilities associated with planning and developing and engineering, permitting, uh, and maintaining these actual projects. We just get the benefit of a lower rate on the uh, electricity. So this so is actually different from participating in that monetization market of the credits. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. as since the virt the the net metering um, <coughs> uh, virtual net metering um, legislation was passed previously, if you had a solar panel on your house, you could net meter with National Grid, but only for your own consumption. 
uh, they broaden that a little bit to kind of deregulate the utilities market to allow municipalities and other nonprofits <coughs> to purchase, to, to net meter with uh, solar energy systems that aren't on town property used by the town. Instead, what they do is they simply pay the, uh, um, pay the um, uh, solar energy developer wherever they're located, um, and they receive and return a credit, uh, you know, the virtual mm -hmm. part where they can then just use that to deduct their, mm -hmm. the town or the, uh, the municipality or the uh, nonprofit can use that to lower their um, electrical costs. Um, so it, it actually, it's a broader scope of uh, uh, net metering than previously was allowed. Uh, and then the only other point that I would say is that if you were to go into negotiating with the, the uh, bidders, uh, you can do that under the town's bid laws, <coughs> the state bid laws for municipalities. Uh, but um, any information that's shared with one of the bidders needs to be shared with all of them. Uh, and any criteria that uh, is looked for in one um, uh, bidder needs to be shared with all of them so that they at least have a chance to satisfy that criteria. And that way, um, you know, everybody that responded would have a chance to give the best offer even if they don't end, end up uh, eventually. And if we do participate or agree to participate in this program, are we committing ourselves to any state obligation by the state to do anything? You would just be committing yourself to purchasing these net metering credits. Um, and, you know, that they have it, these long, so they can have it for a long term. A lot of times these developers rely on these contracts they get um, to, uh, to create their solar system wherever they're creating it. Um, so the only obligation of the town at that point would be to continue to purchase the credit. Um, the contracts do, uh, some of them are better than others, but they do work into, well, uh, you know, what happens if the solar system isn't producing enough electricity to make the credit worthwhile. Some will actually um, uh, provide the town an out if that happens. Um, so not all of the contracts are the same, even if, you know, th there are a couple of factors to look at, but uh, the only uh, obligation that the town would be stuck with would be purchasing the net metering credits uh, from the solar system. So maybe if, I mean, you've, we've got a table here, maybe if you could sort of describe what each of the columns means. So respondent uh, two is 25% sure. of what? The, so the percentage in the first or the second column is the percentage of the credit that would come to the town. Okay. And <clears throat> so they get a credit for every kilowatt hour or whatever produced, and we get a correct. There is that's what's called a net meter rate um, for every kilowatt hour that they produce. So you multiply that by the number of kilowatt hours produced, that becomes the credit. Um, of which, uh, and the credits get allocated, not necessarily purchased in, in other, in all cases, but allocated in this case to the town. Uh, the town then takes the advantage of discounting its bill, uh, but in return uh, pays the producer the rest of that credit back. And also there are two different scenarios between the top and the bottom here. In one case, the developer ultimately holds the renewable energy credits, which then also means it holds the risk of whatever happens with the value of that. Or in the other scenario, uh, the town would hold the credits. My recommendation is to go with the former because, you, again, you have less headache. And if you want to do, um, you know, if you want to do business in credits like this, I think you do need an expert uh, to work with you on that. So the so and then the second one is, I'm sorry, um, the average savings per year in thousands, uh, which then totals uh, to the net savings over 20 years. Uh, and I included the 25-year scenario as well. I didn't bother with the 30 years because I really do think that's too long a term uh, to even consider. I just wanted to be able to compare uh, where the different proposals ended up. And as you can see, um, between 20 and 25 years, different proponents may end up offering the greater um, savings. Um, so you said that's in thousands, so for respondent two it would be 
37 million in savings or did I mishear you excuse me this, this the average per year that's average savings that's, that's thousands so 36,000 37 and a half thousand oh okay all right sheets different this says K. oh all right I'm looking at the other one there you go <laughs> I was gonna say the, I, the math is not discounted right it's just straight year times years it's not Discounting for the fact that a dollar a day is worth more than a dollar right. 20 years from now. That's correct. So the spread may actually be <coughs> tighter in today's dollars. I don't know. And so that may ask the. I'm sorry. And, and then the what determines the, the value each year of the, the savings? Just relative to our energy bills or relative to the value of the RECs? It will, we get a discount on the national grid rate. So we, we pay less per unit of electricity. And whatever we don't actually use goes back to the developer, is that? Correct. Right. So and we don't resell. <coughs> so for example, maybe one year it covers all your um, electricity costs for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, you're buying the, or you have the credits at a discounted rate, essentially you're getting your electricity at a discounted rate. Let's say for a particular year you don't um, cover all your electricity costs, then a certain amount you have to pay the grid at the, uh, the, <coughs> the grid's rate, um, but for whatever amount you get from the solar system, um, you get that discount on the credit. Uh, I mean, I, I would admit, I'm not an expert at the math on it, so. Do you know offhand what we pay in energy per year right now? I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's a pretty large amount. It's greater than $37,000 anyway, right? So basically, is this basically committing to buy a certain amount of energy at a certain price for a certain period of time? No, we only buy what we need. And we either buy it at the standard rate if we don't do things like this, we already do other things such as participating in a program that the League of Cities and Towns develop for aggregated purchasing, which also helps because by purchasing um, in a pool, uh, you get a better price for that as well. That's not affected by this. This is another way to be able to uh, basically just reduce the bill that we, we get to pay. Right, but we're paying for this, right? Right, so you're not, you, don't, you only buy what you need from the sense that you're not buying energy that you're not going to use, but this would essentially, I, th I think the intent of the legislation was to make it so that you could, in effect, buy electricity from a producer that's not national grid. Right. And, and it's, it gives it at a discount. Rate. So on this sheet I'm looking at, is that, does it tell us how much we're paying for the energy or? No. This, this is the amount that comes off of the bill. So we have the budget documents. I mean, we, we, the budget can show you what our expenditures are. Right, no, but these, these companies that we're looking to contract with, we're, yeah. we're, we're purchasing a portion of their RECs, right? They produce energy. The energy goes to National Grid. National Grid uh, gives credits. The credits can, they don't have to be, but they can be allocated to us, in which case we keep a certain percentage of the credit and the, then pay the rest of the credit back to the producer, which is how they make their, their money. Okay, so we're, we're really just a guaranteed customer Correct. for the producer. That's right. Yes. All right. That's the principle and that there are only makes it work. That can be a customer. <clears throat> So that's why these producers are looking for those entities to be a customer. Right. So essentially there's, there's no real cost to us per se to do this. It's, it's just we're guaranteeing that some energy that we know we're going to use <coughs> will be purchased from them by National Grid. At a lower cost than we would otherwise. But there's some incur. competition in the sense of whom we choose from. Mm -hmm. They have an incentive to try to <coughs> obtain our purchase choice. Yes, I, I think it probably, I mean, I'm not an expert on, on this aspect of it, but I, I'd say probably at this point the pool of purchasers is smaller than the pool of people that want to get involved in um, 
having the solar systems. Is that because it's a new idea, or it's because you need to be a you need to be a government ent entity or a um, or a, a certain nonprofits like a a, a university or a school? Right. I, I think it's fair to say I don't know how, whether you've read about it in the paper, but it shows up in the paper on a fairly regular basis that communities are very interested in this and are increasingly buying into uh, these projects. <laughs> Is there a list of other of existing municipalities in Rhode Island who've already inked these deals anywhere? Yeah, Bristol is one. Well, I know Bristol is one, but is there? Yeah, there are, there are, uh, Portsmouth was doing it. Um, again, I don't have the whole whole list in me, but I would say it's between 10 and 15 municipalities that are already doing this. So this strikes me as there's free money available to us, and we just need to be as wise as we can be with the choice. And the question is, do we want the advice of uh, some support to help make that choice? And I'm sensing some hesitance because, I mean, the math is pretty straightforward, right? Um, definitely think it's a good question to know if there's any chance that we would not use the, the target amount of kilowatts. And um, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't remember even having been on the budget committee for a while. There is no real target. Okay. It's, you said if we don't use it's it all, not to say back. that they have no idea how much energy we use and have been using over the years, because that's that was information that was made available through the RFP. And that's also available through the PUC and, and other sources. So they have some idea. Uh, we're actually a rather small fish, so to speak. Um, there is no target that we somehow would have to meet. So the, we I just have our own. If we lose, uh, if, we, if a percentage of the credit, if we don't use it, goes it reverts to the developer. Did I? It's did not I a ma matter of reverting. We make a deal that we, we divvy up the credits. Okay. We get twenty-five percent. They get seventy-five percent. We get thirty percent. They get so 70%. Yes. Yeah. What, where are these credits coming from? Is it, is it from the federal government? Is, is it subsidies? Is that what you're talking mm -hmm. about? And they can take them away at any time, right? They're yeah. going to expire in 2019. I think Donna's question is, is there, is there urgency to make this decision? Is it just the expiration that might happen in, in 12 months? Well, there's only urgency to the point that the people who have made these proposals, their proposals probably are about to expire. Okay. Some, some time has gone by. Uh, they're certainly looking to sign people up now because they want to get into the ground and uh, ideally be operating the ones that we're particularly looking at you know, by like June or, or something who like that. Who initiated this process to make this happen? Uh, it was brought to our attention. I mean, again, this is a program that, you know, the state is promoting, so you become aware of it, you look into it, you look around and see how many other municipalities are doing it. We've talked with people who are in the business and they explained this to us, how exactly it works. You brought it forward or was I've it done a that. sponsored, um, sponsored I, initiative? Yeah, or? we have the whole body it was, okay. We were approached yeah. before you. No. I think, I don't, I'm not sure actually, but. It's not as if there is an interested party who is right, pushing right. this. No. Looking for, for an owner here. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. You said you've been working on this for two years. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, someone before the last council you said approached us. Did I miss well, your name? hasn't even been here a year. Right. I can remember. I don't know if it was a council before. Is it was right. this council? But this has been discussed a lot mm -hmm. of okay. times and they approached us I think it was I think it was before you and Paul looked into it um, and, um, yeah. finally decided this is not a, a brand new thing that only no. started this year no. okay. it's been around for a while <laughs> yeah all right, well, I'm not sensing a strong recommendation here, so my inclination is that well, we should probably take two more weeks to study this, but I defer to the sponsor, and it sounds like you're it. So. Let, let, can, if, if I may ask the solicitor another question, because um, 
I thought we could negotiate, actually we could select one or two out of these five and say we're going to go for it with these, not with the others. And then you can negotiate with them. But what I hear the solicitor perhaps suggest is that if we do that, we still need to go back to everybody else who has put in the proposal. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, think that's true. so the statute allows you to, use, to take the, the lowest three, or the top three um, responsive bidders. Um, I think how many responses were there in this case? Five. There five, five, five proposals, proposals, four proponents. Okay. So, so one had two proposals. Okay. What statute is this? Uh, this is uh, Title 45, Chapter 55, uh, 6A. And essentially that allows, I wrote it down. Just <laughs> uh, that allows the purchasing agent, which is, which is Jan uh, in, in, in Tiverton, which is the administrator in Tiverton. Uh, to uh, to make a determination that in certain circumstances, uh, 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 further sealed bidding is not in the best interest of the town. Then Section Seven uh, B of that statute sets forth certain parameters you have to meet in order to get into negotiations. <coughs> Essentially, what they want you to get at is they don't want you to um, open up the bids and then go to one bidder and say, "Hey, this guy has a lowest yeah. bid. Why don't you beat it by five dollars?" You know, not that. I'm just saying that's the intent of the statute, make sure everybody's on the same page, give everybody the information, give everybody a chance to, uh, to meet any criteria that, you, that you're asking for. Um, and, and then after that, once everybody's given that opportunity, pick the, uh, the one that responds to the criteria you've set out in the negotiations in the best manner, uh, and uh, also at the lowest price, that sort of thing. I really appreciate the the candor of the hesitance. I think that's really important, and I, I really do. So um, I'd like to suggest um, that unless somebody has a strong recommendation that we give this another two weeks to study. We've approved many contracts tonight, and there's nothing wrong with giving this another two weeks. I agree. Um, unless... Uh, are you are you torn on the expert because of money or time? If you don't mind. I'm not sure it's worth the extra money. Now there is theoretically a possibility of the successful proponent ultimately paying us back for that. Well, that sometimes is done, but right. it's not. You now there's no guarantee of that. And this <laughs> is a small town, and seven thousand, ten thousand dollars is a right. lot of money. So I hesitate to recommend that. <clears throat> and. You know, I did consult with Office of Energy Resources. They know these entities. You know, there's no concern that somehow we're dealing with unknown <coughs> players or anything. Um, so I, I think we've done a, a good comparison. But again, I'm not going to hold myself out as an expert. Because <coughs> there's a 400. I mean, it's not discounted back, but there's a nominally a $400,000 spread. And I mean, I'm. A penny, penny, penny pension taxpayer advocate better than that. But I mean, if, if we spent seven thousand dollars and it made us make a decision that was worth a couple hundred thousand dollars, I, I don't know. well, but if you're worried more about time, then that doesn't help. It's right? it's 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 both that. But I think you know the information that in my mind matters the most is in the um, the left top quadrant, so to speak, mm -hmm. twenty years uh, where the developer gets to keep the the credits. <clears throat> to me, that's the less risky uh, of the scenarios that we currently can't consider. Uh, within that, there is, you know, the, the numbers speak for itself. You have one company that offers 25%, uh, another one that offers 24%. So the ones that I have focused on, knowing that both are, in fact, very active locally and in the nearby region <clears throat> and have a track record. Um, that they can certainly do this. They already have been developing projects. Um, and I'd be fine, you know, going forward negotiating with Kearsarge. When I say negotiating, we still have to negotiate a contract. You know, they included a draft contract or a sample contract in their uh, proposals. Um, one is definitely better, and I know uh, the solicitor took, took a look at that as well. So one of the points of negotiation is can you live with this contract rather than the other contract, for example? That's the kind of negotiation that would need to happen, which I would want to do together with yep. uh, the town solicitor, obviously. So, go forward, 
I, I don't mind going forward, and my recommendation would be uh, to pick Kearsarge as the number one yep. and uh, New Gen, no, as in the green development as the number it's two. It's just negotiations. So if, if any of us in our study and research don't, you know, find a concern, <coughs> all we're doing is giving you a negotiate. I mean, we'd obviously can back out because we haven't approved the contract. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yep. And so, any so how does that sound? Yeah, we come back with a contract for a vote. So oh, we could we could research other towns too. We could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm also being mindful of the amount of time in your day. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, but if you want the green light, then I, I think we'll probably give it to you. Okay. So what? What three uh, firms? Was you gonna do it with? Well, I think you Great you're, you're going to lead Pierce with your number two, and then you're and then Peter will make sure that we okay. share the requisite information with the. No. Nearby bidders no. to keep us. You want to negotiate with both these companies, is that correct? Well, I think it's good to keep the door open, but if it has to be done sequentially, you know, we negotiate with one. If that doesn't work out, we move down the line. But well, I don't think it, you know, however you end up structuring the negotiation, just as long as information is shared right. and an opportunity is given. And that might be, you know, you involve, you get into a negotiation and you have. You come back with a certain, okay, we'll offer you X, and then you just send out a notice saying we've just been offered X by one of the bidders, you know, if, if you can beat it. Go ahead. Is, it, is there a consensus, working consensus anyway, that we, we agree um, with the recommendation that the developer, developer would keep the, the credits and the, the risk and potentially upside with that? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right, so that, that's progress. Thank okay. you. So. Okay, well, I'm certainly uh, happy to keep it open for study. I'm also inclined to uh, support the recommendation. Any other thoughts, any motions, concerns? I mean, I don't know if we need a motion. Can we direct the administrator to, to continue on and, and come back to us and with more information? And, and we'll see from there. And in, in the meantime, now that we know the name of the, the, the names of the two leading contenders, we have an opportunity to do our own research and look into them and speaking of which the sets of binders are in my office if any of you have a desire to review yeah. okay <laughs> I, there's been no objections noted on the record so I, I think you have a sense of the, the council and we can proceed without a vote okay any objection moving on okay hearing Could you just oh, summarize that what you're doing okay <laughs> <laughs> So what, what, what we have done is we have um, uh, confirmed the authority of the town administrator to continue negotiating, uh, keeping squeaky clean on the state and local bidding uh, requirements uh, with a recommended developer. We've been presented with a list of uh, 10 proposals. Half of them are in a world where the developer keeps the credits, the ownership of the credits, and the downside and upside that goes with that ownership. And the other half of the list would have the town have that ownership, which would have more upside and downside. What it seems to be a very strong working consensus is that we do not want to bear that risk. So we would um, have the developer keep the credits um, for that. And uh, other than that, um, there has been a, a lead candidate, but certainly no um, decision has been made, and absolutely nothing is binding because we don't even have a contract yet. And I think that all of us are going to um, do our continued study and outreach, perhaps to other towns. Did I get that? Did I miss yeah. anything? No. no. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. This is complicated. Thank you for your work on this. I know. Uh, there's lots of things to work on, so appreciate it. Okay. Ooh, there's six items in one hour. All right. Number seven, reappointment of Mr. William Compton as the administrative officer to the planning board. We have a sub-item of the recommendation of the planning board, and uh, I think it will flow into the next item as well, which is a discussion and possible vote on the town planner, Mr. Compton's contract. We also have an executive session item uh, on personnel. Is there any reason you want to take that out of order? Or 
I, I have no opinion on that. I think we have to, correct? Because Justin wanted to discuss the planner's contract before. I think that's why we're here tonight, is because Justin wanted to talk about the planner's contract before we okay. um, recommend him for the administrative officer. So I think we have to bring up the closed executive session. You want to do that first? I, I believe that that would be how okay. we should do it, right, Peter? Because we can't discuss this without. So, you know, I, I guess. Um, there's really three items on, on the agenda that are interrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, the executive session would basically be um, the, uh, personnel as, as far as evaluation of, of no. particular employees fitness for a no. job. No. No. It's that, not. So, but ex number eight, uh, a vote on the contract. Um, if, I'm, if I may, I think we need to try to get real clear on yeah, this. The this evaluation is, is done by the town administrator. Mm -hmm. Based on the evaluation, I make a recommendation whether to Correct. stop, renew, extend, whatever it is. That is on the agenda. That, in and of itself, does not require to be in executive session. If anyone wants to, which I'm not sure is the right thing to do, talk about the evaluation itself, um, Mr. Compton has suggested that, or has not suggested, has asked that that be done in executive session. I would not recommend having that discussion, but that's. Well, um, we did get your recommendation by email. I want you recommend uh, with Bill's contract. So we could vote on that unless somebody wants to discuss mm -hmm. and ask questions. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Yeah, I understand. And it's hard so, to keep it totally separate. Right, I understand right. that too. But. The recommendation of the planning board was to um, keep Mr. Compton as um, the AO. But we couldn't do that last week because Justin wanted to talk okay. about the contract. I'm, I'm, I'm going to yield to Justin. This yeah. is his item. Yeah. But in, in a, it, it strikes me as somewhat logical that if there is to be discussion about performance, and if I think I have this right, that the discussion in executive session can only be about performance, not about contracts. But if the discussion is about performance, that that would, you'd want to proceed, <laughs> you'd want to have that conversation first before you make a other decision on the contract. So essentially the executive session allows you um, to have any discussion about personnel um, and the fitness of personnel in executive session. So the topic of discussion in executive session will have to be on that topic. There may be other things that are related to that, but it's all got to come back to that topic. The other, and it's got to be exactly that, a discussion. Um, any vote, that'd be an open session item. Uh, and as Denise said, we have had um, recommendations uh, submitted to us from the admin uh, from the planning board as well as from the town administrator. So, what's your pleasure? What's Justin's pleasure? Well, <laughs> just to be clear, I um, I wasn't concerned about uh, reviewing his performance. Um, my concern was just being a new council with just a week of his probationary period continuing. I wanted a little extra time on that. Um, that was the entirety of, of my intention here. Um, so I don't see any need to go into executive session, session for my purposes. Um, and so th and I, I wanted the contract on there just so we could discuss the probationary period because if that wasn't somewhere on the, on the agenda, we could discuss that and approve that is my understanding. So that, I mean, that's, that's where we are. Um, as, as has been said, the planning board is, has recommended continuing him as the um, as administrative officer, which is fine by me if they're recommending that. Um, and if if we've discussed extending the probationary period, that's where I wanted to be anyway uh, with that. So I I don't. So Rob, I think we could just go to seven. Eight, yeah, I'm not hearing eight, anybody yeah. looking to take things out of order. Is that is that fair? Okay, great. Um, well, let me let me uh, let me just ask a few preliminary questions, and then and then Justin Rhodes can jump back in. The the administrative officer piece. So we have the same 
person wearing two hats, right? So the planner hat and the administrative officer hat. And the planner hat reports to our town administrator, and the administrator officer hat reports to the planning board. And us. And us? Yes. Same yes. Time. So there's three hats. Yes, because the planning board is under our jurisdiction, well, not. Yeah, well, it's not Jan's. Jan's in Understood. charge of all the others. Yep. So, at the, the, so I've read the contract and I have a lot of comments on the contract, but the contract I'm reading is really more about the planner. So I'm going to set that aside. On the administrative officer, how long is the. Just, if, if I might, I just want to point out one thing that seems to get forgotten a lot. The contract includes incorporates the description of the position including the responsibilities and i have to apologize i probably should have included that in the email um, but that's part of the contract and so the position description has a section of qualifications a section about the responsibility of the planner and a section probably the longer section on the general duties of the administrative officer so it is one position um, the administrative officer part of that is exceedingly important because it affects how the planning board can uh, operate so that always has gotten a lot of emphasis and, and attention and I think if, if you want of copies of the job description I have them here and one recommendation I think that the town website is missing that part which is part of the confusion so so we just got it but the town website doesn't show what? that piece that's the job description that we use when we go out to advertise. Right. Right. So you're not going to find that, right? No, well, well no, the, the issue is that on a, on a town website under his contract is the contract at the top, it says it's effective May, uh, entered into on the third day of May, um, and it refers to an, an appendix or an addendum with a job description, but that job description is not on the website. That's so a, that's the contract that's on the website doesn't mention the <coughs> administrative officer at all. So I was kind of worried, actually, as I've had the contract, that the contract actually could ban him from being the administrative officer. Which no. is, it should it be posted with the contract. Right. I'm not I apologize. Sure the sign contract is online either. That might be something to check too. I don't think we do that, do we? Well, it, it should. Well, that's it. Sign. should include the position description that's appended. So, we, so, for, so for those that have asked about this, part of the confusion here is that the administrative officer position description, which is important because it's swept into the main mm -hmm. contract by reference, is not online. So you wouldn't know that unless you knew that. So the first, first question I have, just to kind of kick this off, is so. What is is the is the term? I, I see the request for a reappointment. Where would I find the term? <laughs> so, uh, the administ the administrative officer's term is set forth in section twenty three dash six of the planning board's um, uh, land development and subdivision regulations, uh, and twenty three dash six a uh, provides that the uh, uh, it's the uh, AO is appointed. Uh, by the council with recommendation from the planning board, the initial appointment of the AO uh, may be for up to one year probationary period uh, or less uh, with subsequent appointments for up to two years. So uh, the initial appointment can be up to a year for probationary period and subsequent appointments can be up to two years, but they can always be less. And none of that is in this contract. It, that's, that's in the, um, <coughs> the regs. What is your question, Rob? Well, I guess, and I don't want to belabor it, especially if I, I think we have a recommendation that is likely to be followed tonight, but there's, there's a lot of confusing things about this contract. We, we have two positions that are linked, but only linked in part. <coughs> so what, what I think we want to make sure of is that we have very clear understanding on is it a six-month position probation for this period or for both? Are they locked together? Does one always have to be the other one? And I, it, you would not know that, right, from 
from looking at this. We do, the, the planning board's recommendation is it is it is it they say what, six months, right? Pull out the. Think the planning board has recommended six months, right? Um, doesn't say. It doesn't. No. If I'm not mistaken, the I may be wrong, but the way I read it is that the board recommended through the memo of the board chair that um, he be reappointed as administrative officer. But with another uh, with another evaluation in six months. Yes. Time. Okay. So it, it essentially, it goes with this. Oh. Yeah. It, essentially, the planning board is recommending a, a reappointment with another evaluation in six, six months. months time. Yes. And but that's what I understand that you're recommending. You yeah, know, it's basically so. the same the thing. Same Not thing. that we uh, collaborate. Well, I know, on this. but it's basically the same <laughs> right, thing. Right. <laughs> well, but an evaluation is not the same thing as a as a term, right? Or is that are you rereading that as a the term of the contract is a year, with two one year extensions. Yes. And within that first year is uh, a six month probationary period. It does say, that. It it does say, say that. it here. It does in the in the contract. In the contract. Are we allowed to place bets on, on this? Are you looking at section the, one term? The term of this agreement shall be one year with two year a two, extension. Two year with two one year extension. Yeah. And you may two. Is this what you're looking at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where does it say? I mean, I would read that to say that the two year extension is automatic. I'm sorry. It's a. It should say two, one year Maybe. extensions. But it doesn't. No, that's not true. Well, I was here when this was off. <laughs> um, it's it's six months probation, and if they didn't recommend, if they said six months probation, he's done a wonderful job. Then this ends 2021. It's not maybe as clear as it should be, but that's how. Oh, it, I'm sorry. Okay. Right, that's because what it's it says. Work, You're right. Yeah, because yeah. it's worked that way with every mm -hmm. other contract we've done, the town administrator and so forth. So I just, I just won the bet, you're saying? Is that what just happened? I don't I'll get, think I'll get it one of these days. So. Did he win the bet or did I win the bet? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what the bet is. Well, the question was whether there was two one-year extensions no. or, as I say, there's one two-year extension. With a two one-year extension. That's what it says, yes. But where does it, shouldn't it say this something is a three year contract. Right. Okay. So the, uh, the extension is superfluous language. It's just, it's a one year contract with a two year extension. Yeah, it really is to a really To make it a little more confusing, we also do have annual evaluations. Which is my point because Which, I, yeah. you know. You have an annual that we don't have anything to do with. And Correct. if there's a problem, you come to us. But that's just a policy Although of everybody. Right. Every I usually bring department. it back to the council after the one year or after that year well that would be review. recommendation for raises exactly so subject to annual so i think the best way to policy. describe it rob is this is a three-year contract with with it a six-month probation period I, I think you're right i actually do think that's exactly right i think this is a three-year contract that with all due respect is very poorly written and it it it's it does not say here that the council can check in once a year and decide not to renew it. Now, if that was the intent no. of the parties, we no. need to rewrite and it. I didn't mean to say that either. But no, that wasn't the intent of the parties. Well, that is what you said in your... If that's how I expressed it, then I was wrong. But I, what I mean to say is we have annual evaluations. Um, I've been told that you know when I do the evaluation, and, and frankly, it usually comes with, you know, should there be an increase in pay or not, that goes to the council. So the councilor said, well, what's the recommendation? How did the evaluation go? And then it's yes or no for the right. pay increase. That's, that's the extent of the council's review. Right. So if we looked at the administrative, I'm sorry, the planning board's recommendation on the administrative officer, they don't make a recommendation at all as to term. They do make a recommendation as to evaluation, but it's unclear about whether they mean just have an evaluation in six months. Keep in mind, or it, want another term. Most <clears throat> most professionals, like our department heads, want evaluations, even if they have a long contract. So the AO, which is the AO position, which is what the planning board is advising you on, 
uh, which is separate, that their advice only goes for the administrative officer position. Uh, you can choose to um, appoint for that. Um, since you already had the initial appointment, you could go up to the two-year appointment. You could go less. I don't think the planning board's recommendation included a recommendation of how long you want to go. They did state that they would like a six-month review, and if the council feels like a six-month review means a six-month appointment as well, you could choose to do that, or you could choose to do something else. Would, would, I definitely agree with you, but with this contract, can restrain us otherwise from doing that because the AO position is also swept up which you don't see on the public documents through this employment contract it, it's in the it's in the job description and I think that's mostly they wanted someone that would be uh, they wanted someone that would serve both those functions however I think you could disaggregate it if you wanted to well, see I, I know I don't know if it's a, the exact prior contract for a planner but it, Within recent years, it was explicitly in the contract that the planner, the contract was void if the planner was not the AO. And that I don't see in here. So if the planning board comes to us in six months to say, this, this is not working out, we need somebody different, we are bound by our, well, if we extend the probationary period, we're not bound, but say a year from now they come back and they say that we're bound to, that by this contract that he's the AO, but the planning board would want him. Right. So I think, and actually, that contract you mentioned, it said the contract was void if he no longer was the AO. So by extension, you have the right to appoint the AO to that term. And essentially, it said the council could choose not to reappoint. And at that point, if he wasn't the AO anymore, he wouldn't be the plan. You know, the contract would be void. He'd be at will. At this point, it's, it's just have a contract for the planner. You have the regs that allow for the appointment of the AO. I think you just look at it as two separate items. Because as you're right, there's no term in the body mm -mm. That, that states that. Wow. It, also, it also states in this contract that he'll use all of his business time in the position of, is it the position of planner? Is it the position of both? So the position that includes the, that includes the player, responsibilities in the job description. They're very the closely related. I mean, part of being a planner, it, it, it works hand in hand. It makes sense that he's the AL. Has it always, has it always been? I'm thinking back to the Well, Mr. a lot of times Spencer we didn't have it, does, it, it, it. It has always intended to be a jointly held, but at various times, Given certain issues, it has been held by someone other than the plan. Okay. And if, if I may add one but other I, thing, I, it okay. is very common in municipalities for the planner and the administrative yeah. officer to be one of Everybody's happy with that approach these days. <laughs> okay. And I think we haven't heard any um, complaints from the planning board as to that joint role being done great I, I, that's the same salary yeah yes I I do think though and I vaguely remember this discussion while there may not be a sentence in here that says if you're not the administrative administrative officer then uh, you know that 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 you can't continue to be the planner the fact is the job description that's attached requires you to be the administrative yes. officer. So if you are not reappointed as the administrative officer effectively, then you are not performing the job that's on the piece of paper. Well, or on the other hand, the town is breaching the contract. One or the other. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't want to ever have that question come up again. No, but but <laughs> I, I don't think either one is a necessary conclusion. Yeah. By the way, it's looking at what kind of position do we have here? What is this person typically responsible for? So that when you advertise for the position, they have a pretty good idea, and you know, what they would be working on. Um, if part of that job description goes away, I don't think that necessarily sp spells the end of the contract, uh, or or binds you know uh, either side terribly much but I don't think it's the end of the contract action necessarily at all no certainly well certainly not by this language because there is under 
suspension and discharge for cause, there's nothing that would suggest that if, if the planning board wanted a different administrative officer, this would, that would void this contract. I, I, think, I think from a practical standpoint, though, uh, it's not an issue that's going to come up very often for a couple of reasons. Uh, the one is, if you're not reappointing someone as the administrative officer, even if you're doing it at the end of a period so that you don't need to state cause, a lot of times there is a cause. Um, and so if you approach the employee and say, look, we have some cause here, and here's the direction we're going to go, um, uh, that, that usually resolves the issue. Uh, and then the other, the other um, reason why uh, it doesn't usually come up is because it does have the six months probationary period at the beginning of the planner contract, which allows uh, termination without cause. <coughs> As been discussed, you can negotiate if there's an agreement to extend that probationary period without cause. And I think it's kind of structured that, um, uh, you know, you have the one year uh, and then the ability to have a two-year extension. Now, if you get past the one year, presumably you've, you've uh, um, determined that this employee is probably going to be with you for a while because you've tested them out. So, for those reasons, I think it usually doesn't come up uh, often. But in the odd circumstance that in a year from now, the planning board says, for no fireable reason, we just don't want to work with them anymore, the council will decide at that point whether to say, tough no, he's, he's working with you, or say, okay, we're, I guess we're just going to take that out of his duties and yeah, hire somebody exactly. else. Okay. Yep. Remind me again. Was, so the intent was a three a three year contract, not one plus one plus one. The three. Yeah, three. I, th I think the way I look at it is that it's one year, uh, and then you can extend it for the two years and three years in total. Well, it's the I think the the, for six months. the word can there. I don't see. I mean, as in the contract as it is, and it, we may be changing that tonight. But it doesn't say you can. It says you get a year, and then you get two years as an extended period, which makes the extension kind of just a superfluous. The only thing that changes is the salary negotiations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, oh, is that what it is? Is that the purpose? I, yeah. I but we're not here to change the contract this evening. No, it's, it's just not even on the agenda. So, I, I wouldn't interpret it that way. I mean, this is the form contract that you've had with the town, and one reason would be if you interpret it that way, you are interpreting the language to be superfluous. And I, I also think. Uh, you know, it, it, it kind of would read in tandem with paragraph 18 regarding extensions, which gives you a time frame uh, towards the end of a term to tell the, the employee that you're not going to renew. I think the intent of including a one-year and then a two-year, a one-year term and a two-year term, allows you another opportunity to uh, exercise um, that um, notice. In, in paragraph 18. But, but Peter, the, in paragraph 18, it doesn't say end of the term, it says end of the contract. Right. Which is three years. Maybe. It also says it ends, the probation period ends on November 31st. Which, whatever that might be. Right. So I think we have a recommendation here that um, uh, works out, I think, pretty well for everybody, right? There's also an interesting question about this contract being dated before the F last FTR. There is some cleanup, I think, that we should consider. And um, the six-month probation period is a perfect way to do all of that, give everybody lots of time. And uh, and I, I for one, actually, I, I, any time we're sort of saying, well, we could interpret it this way, and you know, I'm pretty sure, like, why are we there? Like, the whole point of contracts is to not be in litigation because the purpose of the parties is clear. And so, I mean, <laughs> this is. Um, what did you, when did you say this was dated? What are you? Third of May. Is that what that says? The third, or is that the agreement entered into this the third day of May? Yeah. But it says three. I don't think it was. I like to see the original with my signature on it because I don't think this is the original. No, because my signature is not on this, or your signature is not on this. So no, it's I, I, only. It was approved May 29th. It was approved May 29th. That, yeah. 
But it wasn't. This is the problem, right? And the, and it the wasn't. It was done. See what we're talking about because it doesn't have the. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think right. this is wrong. So what what I what I might suggest, and I I don't particularly oh, see the need to go. To it's May 30th. I think that's what that says. It's 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 three. It, that's not three D, because it says the day right after it. I think that's May 30th. Yes. This this May 30 day. This. I think that's this 30 day of May. This will never happen again. Okay. Well, I well, <laughs> but this. Yeah. It was. I know it was. It was after the FTR. We purposely did not approve it before the FTR because we didn't know what the vote was. So I know that this was not done on the third day of May. I think the minutes will reflect that too, the May 28th meeting. Of oh. Well, but then it says it was at the end of the contract that we have now, it said it was attested this contract of employment was approved by the council by action duly taken on the 29th day of May. It was after the FTF. <laughs> okay, so it was I think we have a recommendation, which is actually, I think this is all going to work out just fine. We have a recommendation from the planning board at least to have an evaluation in six months. I do not interpret having an evaluation to mean having a term, but we have the discretion to appoint up to two years wearing the administrative officer hat. We all agree on that. So we could follow the advice or the recommendation of the planning board and go out to six months, right? And solve that. <clears throat> I think it, it, if this is this, if this is the contract that you signed, it does pick up the administrative officer by incorporation into the main body of the agreement. So we don't, you know, we don't have a situation where, um, at least for now, where either party can be upset that one doesn't include the other. We, we keep thinking about it from one perspective. Another perspective, a, a strong professional like our planner might be very upset if he was not the administrative officer and might come back and say, you're breaching the contract. I expected this level of responsibilities and this level of duties. So don't think it's just a good thing. If you know. So if we follow the recommendation, the parties have agreed, and I think very appreciative of that, to extend the probationary period, which is also, frankly, a courtesy to this council to let us have an opportunity to, to orient and work together. And those of us like me that have a problem with the wording have a few months to, to, to hammer that all out. And, um, and I think that should make everybody happy, right? So yep. I'd like to make a motion. Is that, is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. To reappoint William Compton as the administrative officer to the planning board for a six month period as per recommendation of the planning board. I'll second it. Just for clarity, I ask when the six month period would begin. It would start today. Uh, tomorrow. Well, November 30th. Today, yeah. November 30th. No. So, whatever well, the last one. No. Okay. Well, you'd have to think of. No, hang on. I would back up a second. Uh, because I don't know when the planning board did their review. November 15th. No. <coughs> November 15th. But, but so it, it clearly it says, says here November it expires 30th. as of November 30th, 30th so and, and they recommend right. a six-month right. a six month appointment. The, so that would sheet. be as of November 30th. Okay. Yeah. So it would be yeah. November 30th. Okay. So six months would be May, May, yeah, 30th. Would be May, May 30th. May, May 30th. Yep. Which, would make, which would correspond with the That's, I just contract. <laughs> I just wanted to check that. Can we, can we just call it May 31st, or you want to call it May 30th? We can call it anything you want, okay. Rob. It's one day. I won't argue. Calendar months. Yeah. Yeah. Just six months. <laughs> so what are we going to do? I, I November support 30th? that. I'd like to see that conditioned upon the council also extending the main body probationary period as agreed by the parties until May 31st. I don't, I don't see why that can't be one motion. Um, Objection to that? No, so I'll amend my motion. Well, I, I, I do have one question about that, though. I wait till after and we'll see if there's questions. Okay. Make the motion. Then any questions? Okay. And, right? Yeah, and you were recommending a six <coughs> month in 
extending, uh, extending it through the first year. Okay. So I will amend my motion to reappoint with William Compton as administrative officer to the planning board and as the town planner for a six month probationary period last uh, starting November 30th. Through May 31st. Through May 31st or May 30th. And I'll second it. So Mr. Compton, did you want to be heard or? or no, thanks. I, I, I do want to say that this has nothing to do. <laughs> He's fine. This is all our contract is not your fault, and I uh, appreciate you helping us out through this. We, right. so we have a motion. All right. Is there uh, any other comment or discussion? Any amendments or decisions? Any objection to calling for a vote? Uh, no, I just thought, uh, do, do, do we need a vote to allow the, because the, the contract does have to be modified, correct? This requires an actual amendment yeah, to the contract. That's going to have yes. to be drafted. So. Tomorrow. Or you could just approve this and then authorize. <coughs> authorize the town administrator. To work and then have the town council president sign it when that's yes. off. Well, I. This is implied <coughs> though. If, if Mr. Compton is willing to assent on the spot too, I think that also gets it done too, right? I mean, I don't want to put him on pressure, but if you're. No, if no, you're no, right, no. He, he doesn't to have to. No. I'm not allowed to sign the. The contract. So you. Well, yes, you are, because you signed the last one. We. <laughs> we gave you authorization to do it you at that point. Yes, we did. <laughs> I think I was away. I think the authorization to sign is implicit. I'll, I'll, I'll let you opine on that. Do you want to say any further language, or do you think that the the officers and the town administrator have authority to execute the resolution if it passes? Yeah, I think it's generally. I think it's understood that uh, once you pass it, that's that's what we'll do. I think we could actually all meet in the clerk's office and edit this by eight nine o'clock. Okay. Okay. So. I do have a question. Though. What, what what would happen theoretically if for some reason surprise blizzard and we're unable to sign a contract tomorrow and the probationary period expires without having signed the new contract? You know, no, I, we no, still it, have a contract. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, a, the contract you have it as soon as you have the agreement. Yes. This is just to memorialize it. Mm -hmm. The parties have already agreed on the terms, mm -hmm. so yeah. we're actually doing the ratification piece of this. Yes. Yes. So for the record, everybody's agreed that the probationary period is extended through the first year of the contract and as long as we vote, it's a seven. <laughs> if we do, and Mr. Compton we vote is, on is here without objection. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So the, the motion, to be clear, was to reappoint as administrative officer and extend the probationary period both through and planner. And that's planner. That's the probationary period of the planner through May 31st. Yes. Okay. 2019. Yes. Okay. The motion. Yep. Are you going to ask me to summarize? <laughs> the motion's been made in second. Right. Is it hard to hear us or just somebody later? Yeah, okay. he'll check. Yeah. Here's what we're doing. The, the, Mr. Compton is wearing two hats, planner hat, administrative officer hat. We are extending both of those hats until May 31st, 2019, for sure. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right. We need to vote, though. Good. We have to vote. We need to vote. Okay. To vote. All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Motion and to adjourn. again, thank you, Mr. Coffin. I appreciate your attendance. Second. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn and a second. second. I don't know if that's debatable, but is there any objection to adjourning? Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought we were meeting till 10.